what kind of harms are 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 present here though right these are harms that are physical harms those are important in islam you know we have to protect our bodies we have to protect and the modern world is a materialistic world and so it can understand and register physical harm okay but are those the only harms that exist i mean for a lot of modern people yes you know show me the stats show me the the, the science show me like you know the actual physical harm and i'll agree that maybe we should regulate something by legislation but if you say wait a minute what about what about you know s- spiritual harm oh my gosh no like that's completely off uh, the you know all, all outside of consideration right. because there is no you know yeah. that's denied essentially or it's considered something totally subjective what about even like emotional psychological harm these are kind of taken i mean into consideration more but then it becomes much much more su- subjective i think as to what constitutes emotional and psychological harm and what doesn't so when we talk about harm as muslims we have to realize that we have a much more nuance and a much more uh, comprehensive view of harm that's based on a on a full and realistic um, appreciation of what the human being actually is. We are bodies, we are minds, we are hearts, we are souls. We exist in this world and we will exist in an eternal afterlife. And so our maslaha, right, our interest, our what is good for us is that which brings about our felicity and our health in all of those do- on all of those domains and all of those levels physical mental spiritual and in both worlds this world and the next world like that's what is in our best interest and there are things that we might not discern the harm in because the harms are immaterial the harms are spiritual the harms are ultimately you know leading to destruction in the afterlife which is the worst kind of harm imaginable and it's much worse than getting lung cancer being thrown into the hellfire you know for eternity or even for any amount of time Right, that's much worse than getting lung cancer and dying of it. You have to die somehow anyway. Right, I'm not saying we should make light of it, but you know, compare those two, and there, there's no comparison. So, of course, modern secular society cannot register. I mean, it has no resources for assessing or talking about, or even allowing for any consideration of you know spiritual harm or moral harm. But again, that is fairly new, because it wasn't too long ago that things. You know, again, particularly before the sexual revolution, people don't realize it was only in 1967 that I believe it was Holland and Denmark, two of the most liberal countries and most secular countries, legalized written pornography. Okay, what do I mean by I mean like salacious novels? Okay, so imagine a a world in which in European countries, right, as secular as they are, uh, it was you know uh, salacious novels were actually prohibited. They could not be sold. It was just indecent. It was considered an affront to public morality. And that was considered important and that everyone would suffer if you allow basic moral norms to just be undermined. And then, so 1967, those two countries allow uh, written uh, pornographic materials. And then in 1969, again, this is in the heart of the sexual revolution, um, in the heat of it, um, they allow everything else, you know, images and photography and, uh, uh, you know, movies. And then that becomes a norm across the Western world. But before that, no, like it was, this was actually considered illegal because this was considered an affront to, I guess they called it like public morality. And and that was considered legally relevant in the West, just literally a generation or two ago. You know, like you can't just engage in activities that are outright immoral Mm -hmm. because moral harms are real harms because the moral life is something real and objective. Now, of course, that's completely been scuttled, especially in the last 50 years, as we've moved from like the modern period into the postmodern period. Mm -hmm. That's part of a much larger social trend, a trend towards subjectivism, a trend towards relativism, a trend towards non-realism in all realms, including and especially the moral realm. It's all very new and we need to realize that. 